honestly, everything that I did to start learning Spanish and everything that you need to do to learn Spanish can be summed up into one simple phrase. What's up language leaders? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Erica, here to help support and coach you on your Spanish language learning journey. That's a mouthful. If you're learning Spanish, you're in the right place. So consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. So literally the first three videos that I ever made for this channel, well not including the first one which was a little welcome video, but the three ones after that were part of a three video series which I named, I believe, How I Learned Fluent Spanish. Welcome to my three part series on how I learned fluent Spanish. So over the course of three videos, I'm going to be breaking down for you the six methods that I use to accomplish this without ever having studied Spanish in college and way before I ever considered moving abroad. I even went so far as to make that entire video series in Spanish as well. Hola amiguitos, soy Erika. Bienvenidos a mi serie en que les voy a estar hablando de cómo aprendí español con fluidez siendo americana. A través de tres videos les voy a estar compartiendo los seis métodos que utilicé para lograr esto. So I will link to both of those down below. The Spanish series is actually on a second channel. My vision was different back then. I don't really know why I put those on a second channel, but I'll link to both of those below so that you can check them out in detail. Anyway, in those videos, I talked about six main things that I did to learn Spanish. But in today's video, I really wanna focus on those first three because really they can all be summed up into one simple phrase. So I want you to listen to these really brief clips and tell me if you can figure out what category this all falls into, okay? Let's get started with method number one. Listen to Spanish via songs, audiobooks, podcasts, and talk radio, for example. Method number two. Watch shows, movies, and the news in Spanish. One of the things that really helped me a lot when I was first learning Spanish was a program called Destinos. You guys might remember that. It was this melodramatic TV show specifically designed to teach Spanish. So now in method three, we're going to continue to build vocabulary and work on our listening skills while at the same time working on our speaking, pronunciation, and literacy. That's a lot. How are we going to accomplish all that? Method number three, learn to read Spanish and read it out loud every day. Did you guess what those three activities had in common? Comprehensible input. Yes, the term that many of us are familiar with, coined and popularized by linguist and educator Stephen Krashen. Well, what does that mean? What is comprehensible input? Well, it's been defined as input or a piece of content that you consume, be that by listening or reading, that you can just understand through the context, but you don't know all of the words, you don't know all of the structures contained within this piece of content, this what you're reading or what you're listening to. It's been described as something that's one level above your current level. So it's easy enough for you to understand, but it's still challenging enough with enough new words and phrases that you're still learning. So according to Stephen Krashen's theory of language acquisition, comprehensible input helps the learner to acquire language naturally rather than learning it consciously. I'm a big believer in comprehensible input because I do feel that I mainly acquired Spanish almost subconsciously rather than learning it consciously. Some of you know that I never took Spanish classes with the exception of a very interesting sixth grade experience, which I've mentioned to you guys before, um, which was basically four or five months of learning greetings and the names of some foods and some random vocabulary. And a teacher who was very, very nice, but spoke to us 99% of the time in English. So I guess that was my first exposure to Spanish, but 
I learned nothing and didn't start learning until a few years after that. I think many of us have had some sort of failed language experience in school. The point is, I was not interested. I could not imagine when I could ever need to use Spanish in my life. <laughs> and I didn't actually start learning until a couple years later. When I did start to learn Spanish, I was very much self-taught. Not that I learned by myself. I had plenty of sources and people to listen to, things to read. Once I could speak, I had plenty of people to speak with. You never learn a language by yourself, but you can teach yourself a language without classes, without anyone explicitly explaining things to you. By the time I did get to college, I signed up for Spanish as an elective for some easy credits. <laughs> but since I could already speak, read, and write Spanish, I had even learned the grammar simply through use. I tested out of all of those classes and still never had to take a Spanish class. And the way that you teach yourself a language, the way that most polyglots will tell you that they learn languages is through comprehensible input. It's through a large amount of listening and a large amount of reading. Towards the beginning of my Spanish learning, I did take an at-home course called Destinos. Some of you may have heard of that. I've mentioned it many times before, but it was basically a course designed to teach you Spanish through a series of this melodramatic type of show. And I did do whatever exercises I was supposed to that came in the book and all of that. But even that was 95% based on comprehensible input. Of course, I didn't know that back then. I had never heard of that term, but I just remember that I was fascinated by the story. And I'm like, you know, I better be learning this vocabulary because I need to know what is in Don Fernando's letter, okay? So that was the motivation for me. And I just loved the story. I wanted to know what happened next. I was listening so hard and just trying to understand. And that was sort of my introduction to Spanish. Oddly enough, it's called Destinos and Introduction to Spanish. And it really was sort of my introduction to, to Spanish. So yeah, this is kind of the closest that I ever got to structured Spanish learning. But even that was based on comprehensible input. If I had had to learn Spanish through a teacher taught lecturing me or a bunch of grammar exercises and vocabulary lists and all of these traditional things that you have to do in school, I likely never would have learned. And like most of us have had some sort of experience with Spanish. It's taught in most schools, but most people don't speak it. So what is my point in all this? I know I've just kind of been chatting, <laughs> but the point is, just like you, I started from zero. I had never learned a foreign language before. I did not grow up exposed to a second language. I started from nothing from, I mean, forget comprehensible input. The input was completely incomprehensible at first, but I built from there, not knowing that eventually all of that input would turn into something meaningful, but it did. And the same thing is happening again. Years later, when I decided that I wanted to learn another language, French, I'm doing the same things. I'm really focusing on the input. I find things that are interesting to me, that are enjoyable to me. I find ways to make them comprehensible. We'll go into that in another video of how to make input comprehensible. But the point is I, I exposed myself to a lot of French. Because of that, I started having conversations in French at four months and was actually able to communicate with people not very well. I could make myself understood. So what I want to say to you is trust the process. No, you can't just go around listening to Spanish music and then one day wake up fluent. There are things that you need to do. There's a discipline that you need to have, a consistency. You need to choose the right materials. That's what I'm here for. But do trust the process that it won't always be hard to understand. It won't always be hard to speak. Not if you're consistent, not if you really focus on the comprehensible input. It won't always be overwhelming if you just stick with it. There is so much more to be said on this topic. Make sure you're subscribed and that you hit the notification bell so that you do not miss anything. 
and you'll notice that lately I have been publishing a lot more comprehensible input for you guys in Spanish on this channel. So my face is not always on here, but I've spent time behind the scenes writing these stories and in these conversations, translating them so that you guys don't only have the tips and the strategies, but also the tools to really make this work for you. I'm open to suggestions always. If there's a particular topic that you would like a story or a conversation written about in Spanish, drop me a comment, let me know. My goal is to expose you to different accents as well. The last story that I published on this channel was read by a Venezuelan speaker. I've had my husband on here many times, he's Mexican. So I want to just keep adding different people, different ways of speaking so that you guys get used to a variety of accents and you can start to understand the people that you may run into on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I know that making good use of comprehensible input isn't as easy as it may sound, so I want you to go ahead and download my Spanish Fluency Blueprint this is essentially a study method that walks you through what I do after I find a piece of comprehensible input that I want to study. What happens after that? This walks you step by step through that process and you could use this of course for so many languages, not just Spanish. So what are your favorite places for finding comprehensible input in Spanish or in your target language if you're learning another language? Let me know in the comments below. Check out my full series of how I learn fluent Spanish in both languages. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos and as always, don't forget to go out and live a new language today. Hasta la próxima amigos.